Hey guys, what's up? Johnny from John's Motorsports, John's Speed Lab. So we have here is a, um, a Cobra, no fuel pressure. They installed one of these um, amplifiers. I'm not sure if this is the MSD. I don't know what amplifier this is. Definitely not the JPC. It's a bit, um, not JPC, GMS. Um, and they <clears throat> amplified this wire here, green with yellow. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that. Green with yellow right here. And you can see the splice right here they spliced in. Now, I have to check the integrity of the wires. I have no fuel pressure. Pump does toggle and turn on, okay? But I have no fuel pressure. Look at the diagram. We'll put the scope on this. We check duty cycles for the pump, PCM to uh, FPDM. FPDM to PCM, okay? And they both checked out. Um, and then what we did is we turned around and we checked voltage here on the feed wire. This is the feed wire going to the uh, control signal from the PCM to the um, uh, from the PCM to the uh, fuel pump driver module, okay? It's a, it's a brown pink, and it goes up to the fuel pump. See the motor right here? That's the fuel pump. This is your positive side. This is uh, basically um, a negative side, but it's grounded by the FPDM. So what we did is we put a, a voltmeter on this side, put the scope on this side, toggle the key on. We've got power here, power here. Once you crank the car, the voltmeter on this side is going to show zero, zero, zero point or two maybe okay so the fpdm is grounding this right here and completing the circuit here and making the pump take it take the load basically take the actual voltage and it's getting it over now it, everything checks out everything's fine fpdm is fine the only thing that made me you know was funny on this car is i said you know what something's up especially because it's a very lowered car now if you guys know the ccrm has the relay in it on these cars now look at this so it threw me for a loop when I saw this. And you guys know, CCRM is here. I'm wondering, I was like, oh, maybe it frayed the wiring. So we have to check everything. I checked the entire circuit. The battery was dead too on top of it. So we checked the entire circuit. Everything checks out. Duty cycle of the pump is fine. Everything is fine. Everything is, the circuit is good. So now I got to drop the fuel tank. Because I have a feeling now, something's going on from the fuel pump. And what's feeding the lines from the, uh, the fuel hat. Something's going on there. And the reason why, because the pump does toggle on. Toggles on, it's fine. You may have too much of a voltage drop and the pump is not gonna be able to spin enough, or the pumps in this case, are not gonna be able to spin enough to create that fuel volume that you need and get the car to run. Or it'll start, it'll run, and then die. So next step on this is to drop the tank, which is gonna suck. Not that big of a deal, but it's a pain in the ass. This is a really nice, clean car. Very nice. The paint is nice. Wheels are freaking sweet. Got nice ceiling wheels on it. It's dropped to the ground. Beautiful car. Looks like it's got a pulley on it. That's where they put the uh, the voltage booster for the pumps, which I don't know why you would use that. I don't even know what that is. It could be an MSD. There's no markings on it, nothing. I don't know if the guy took the sticker off or what the last shop did, but uh, that's where we're at on this. So I'm about to pull the fuel, the fuel tank on it and take a look and see. And I'll continue the video, show you what's going on with the fuel pumps and see if we can find why this thing has no fuel pressure and it's no starting. All right, guys, so here we are under the car. You can pull the tank down. It's got a lot of fuel. I didn't pull the fuel out. I got the two liter to pull the fuel out of the tank. But I wanted to check quick, quick before I did anything because it's very rare these fail. Well, there's our problem. Remember, we did all the diagnostics on the, um, you guys can see that, all the diagnostics for the, uh, the FPDM, the fuel pressure center. Everything's been done, but take a look at this. There it is. You guys can see it right there clearly. There's your brake, there's your issue. That's so why the fuel pump will toggle on, no fuel. So there we go, we found the issue. So I'm gonna pull the fuel out of this tank down, <clears throat> pull this um, pull this fuel hat out. Have to be careful not to bust anything. Pull the fuel hat out and uh, repair that, and this uh, no start should become a start. It should be uh, just fine. So. Uh, We'll take a look, see if a wire was touching or something was going on there. Maybe they just nicked it when it was, uh, when they were putting it back in. But it looks stock. This looks factory. It doesn't look like the pumps have ever been touching this. So we'll see how it, uh, how it, how, how it works out. I'm going to, you know, pull a few out of it and take a look and see what's happening and we'll figure it out. But again, the most important part was the testing before doing all this hard work. You want to be sure to test the circuits and make sure everything is correct because FPDMs are known to fail on Cobras, okay, especially with two pumps because of the amperage both pump. Poles. That's why a lot of guys, when they upgrade the pumps, the amperage is higher on the pumps. And what they do is they put a second FPDM or they modify an FPDM that can take more amperage. 
So it's not just about voltage. You have to make sure that the FPDM can send the signal and can hold the, the amps to be able to support the pump, especially when you use a booster pump, like a Kenny Bell booster pump, um, or any, I don't know what this thing was. Uh, it's a black box. I don't know what, who it's from. It's definitely not from uh, JMS. We sell those. So I know it's not that. It's probably the MSD one. So you have to be, you know, sure of what you're doing when you mess with these. Because if you go lean, you know, and you've changed the pulley on your Cobra, and, you know, you're trying to, you know, make 500 horsepower, and you, well, what's happening? And you got something that clips, and uh, you lose your voltage, and you lose your current to your pumps, so you're going to have a problem. So you have to make sure that when you do, uh, you do the mods, you do them right. If you have questions, it doesn't cost you anything to call me. I have no problem giving you any advice. You don't have to buy anything. Call me up. Tell me what you want to know. And uh, ask me the questions you want to know, and, I, and I'll help you any way I can. And if you're, you know, diagnosing a circuit and you don't have a scope and you want to figure something out, I can simplify it for you. Just use a voltmeter, and I can show you more or less how to do it. So uh, give me a shot if you need any help. And again, thanks for watching. Like I said, you need, need to test your, you know, test your circuits, test before you replace stuff. So in this case, we tested all the circuits. Everything came out. Duty cycles from FPDM to the PCM, PCM to the FPDM. Uh, Voltage is at the pump. The computer was grounding the opposite side of the pump, doing what it's supposed to. Everything checked out. So the only other thing it could have been, mechanical issue, and there's the mechanical issue. Nine times out of ten, it's a mechanical issue, not your tune, not your, you know, not the circuit. It's very rare. A lot of times, nine times out of ten, especially in a newer 0304 Cobra or a very clean, low mileage Cobra, you're not going to see circuit issues. You're going to see shit like this after somebody puts a, you know, a booster pump or some kind of stupid shit on there. I don't put booster pumps on cars. I just don't. I don't. I don't bother with them. The only one I'll use is the one from JMS, and that's if I use one and I really think I need one. I mean, I won't. I won't do it. I usually put an upgraded pump on a car, uh, you know, in, in the proper FPDM and do the right, right thing, or put a second FPDM, have two pumps, make sure they can both handle the amperage. So, guys, thanks for watching. I know this went a little bit long, but what can I say? Anyway, I can help you guys. There you go guys, that's the repair. Repair and ready to go. It's battery, uh, just a quick replacement battery. Makes about 14 pounds. There you go. I'll button a few other things up. Put the uh, carpets back, the uh, plastic with carpet back under the trunk, make it nice and clean, get it done, wipe it down, give it to the customer. Thanks for watching.